Hi everyone. Let's play 25 more forks from the book Chess Tactics for Champions by Susan Polgar. So if you'd like to play along, just pause at the beginning of each position. Some of them are white to move and some are black to move. I think most are white to move. Okay, here's the first uh, position. It's white to move. All right, we're going to force the king into an awkward position by playing rook to d8 check first. If he takes a rook, then we get this royal fork and we'll be up a piece and win. If he doesn't take the rook, he's even worse off. We'll get this royal fork and protect our rook at the same time and we'll retain the rook. Okay, so here is the second position. And this one's also white to move. Okay, so here we're going to begin by taking on f6. The reason we're taking on f6 will become apparent. Black's going to have to recapture either way with the bishop or the pawn. Makes no difference. Our move is queen to e4. So this is a fork of a piece and a mate. And so we removed the defender. The knight was defending h7. So the best black can do here is protect against the mate, of course, but then lose the rook. All right, here is the third position. So this one's also white to move. All right, we're going to play queen to b6 check here. And that forks the king and the rook. So if the king moves away, we could at least take the rook. But it's even worse than that. If the king moves away, we just have a checkmate backed up by our rook on b1. So black has to try to take our queen. But then we recapture with the pawn and we get this nice pawn fork. Okay, so we're going to win the rook and we'll be up material. So the fourth position... And this one is black to move. All right, it's a tough one. It's based on the vulnerability of the white king on the back rank and also the loose piece, the knight on b6. I think there's more than one way to win this position. But a very clean move here is queen to c3. What are we forking? Well, we're forking two squares, actually. If we move the queen to e1, that would be a checkmate. Okay. And if we move it to e3, that would fork the knight and the king. White can't really do anything about that. He has to stave off checkmate, and he can do that in several ways. For example, if he moves the h-pawn or g-pawn to get some luft, then we're just going to fork the king and the knight and pick up the piece, and we'll win. Um, another way to stave off mate is to move the king. So let's see what happens if he does that. If he moves it to f2, then we have a different fork. We're forking the king and the knight like that. And if he moves it to f1, then we'll just check on the back rank, force him back up to the second rank. Either f2 or e2 makes no difference. We'll get the same kind of fork from the b2 square. So there's really nothing uh, white can do in this position. Perhaps another try is queen to c4, getting ready to block the mate threat on e1. But that does nothing about the loose knight. We'll simply fork the king and the knight and pick up a piece. So a little complicated, but black wins in all lines. All right, the fifth position, and this one's white to move. Okay, a little bit tricky. The move is knight to g6 with a discovered attack on the queen. And our queen is loose right now. Black can take it. But if he does, then we take his rook and we get a royal fork. And so we get the queen back and we're up a rook. Um, white wins in all lines if he doesn't take the queen. Remember, we're threatening his queen. So, for example, if he takes our knight, we just pick up the queen and we're up material. Um, you might consider some other defensive tries, like 
black has his rook under attack as well as his queen. Maybe he can save both, slide the rook over, and protect the queen. Well, that doesn't work because we get this royal fork here, and if black wants to save his queen, he can try taking the knight, but that just leaves protection of his queen. So there really is nothing to do in all lines in this position. One last try might be something like uh, queen e6. Uh, that's probably the best move, but that just drops the exchange. The knight is protecting the queen, so he's going to be down the exchange in this position. And so white is winning. Position number six. This one is also white to move. All right, the idea here is based on this loose rook. The rook is protected once, but it's attacked once. The protection and uh, defense, or, or rather the defense and offense, cancel each other out. So that's why I call that a loose piece. And so the correct move here is knight takes g6 check. And if black captures the knight with the pawn, then we get this nice fork, queen to h4 check. And that's what I mean by picking up that loose piece. If we attack it, we're going to win it. So the king has to move, and we win it. And you don't, uh, you don't want to take with the queen, actually, because then you're going to drop the rook right back. So what you want to do here is take with the rook, uh, which is protected by your queen. So white is up the exchange. If we go back after our key move, knight takes g6. If black tries taking the knight with the queen, well, our queen is under attack, so we're going to deal with that first by trading queens, and then we're going to take the loose rook on e7. So white wins in all lines. Here's position number seven. It's white to move. Black's king is, of course, open here, and so we should consider a mating attack with the bishop and the queen. Uh, the key move is queen to g5 check, and that forces the king into the corner. And then we follow up with queen to h6. That's a mate threat here, so you're forking the h7 square and the rook on f8. But the rook is incidental. We're not trying to win it. We're trying to mate. We can mate from either square. So we're forking two checkmates here. If um, black blocks the bishop, for example, to stave off the checkmate here and also open up the queen to defend, he simply gets mated like this. So there's no defense. Here's position eight. This one's white to move. All right, this one's not too hard if you notice the rook and bishop are both loose and you look for ways to fork it. So we start off with a forcing move, check. The only response is blocking with the knight. And then queen to a5 forks the rook and bishop, and there's no way to protect them both. So white wins material. All right, on to position nine. Okay, this one's white to move. All right, this isn't so hard if you consider forcing moves. The pawn is about to queen. Let's consider queening it. If we queen it, we're checking black, and he better take the queen, otherwise he's down a lot of material. But if he does take the queen, then we have this nice fork, forking the king and the rook. So we're going to be up a lot of material in this line. All right, here is position number 10. Okay, we can similarly consider queening the pawn here as a forcing move to see what happens. Turns out it is the correct move to queen the pawn with check, double check actually. So what does black do? Well, he better not just let our queen live and go down so much material, especially since we're forking the king and the queen here. So he has to try taking the queen. But then he walks right into this royal fork, which incidentally also protects our rook. So he has to back away somewhere, and then we get the queen, and we're up a lot of material. Here's position number 11, and this one is black to move. 
All right, this one is a queen sacrifice. It's a bit tricky. So the correct move here is queen takes c3. Okay, and that just picked up a piece, so white has to try taking the queen. But after taking the queen, black gets a rook. So, so far, black got a rook and a piece, a minor piece for the queen. But black is also forking more material here. And that rook is also under attack by the other rook. So black is going to pick up a rook in addition to the other pieces. White has to move the queen somewhere. Black picks up the rook. And two rooks and a knight are much better than a single queen. So black is winning. So here's position number 12. This one's white to move. Okay, we're going to achieve a royal fork by a sequence of trades. We're going to begin by taking the bishop, and we're a piece up unless black recaptures. Then we're going to take the knight, and again, we're a piece up unless black captures, but then he walks into a royal fork, and so white will be up a knight in the end. Here's position 13. So white doesn't have a lot of material to work with. He's going to try to fork the king and the queen. And the only forcing move is rook to b8 check. But it's a good move. After king to g7, white follows up with the rook sacrifice on g8. Okay. And now either black takes the rook or moves his king to h7. But from either square, we have a royal fork. And so white's going to remain up a knight in this line. Let's take a look at position number 14. This one's black to move. This one's tricky, but it's a common theme in this chapter of Polgar's book. There are a lot of royal forks. When the king and queen are pretty close and there's a knight nearby, search for those royal forks. Here's the key move, knight to c3 check. Only one legal move to the corner here, and then there's a forcing move here, which is bishop to b2 check. And that's a bishop sacrifice, and this is the only legal move, but it does draw the king exactly where we want it. We now achieve a royal fork, and we pick up the queen, and so black wins. Here's position number 15. This one's black to move. Okay, this also involves a royal fork in the end. This knight is going to pick up that queen due to a royal fork. How? Well, we begin with a queen sacrifice. We take the rook, which you can think of because it draws the queen away from defense of the g1 square, which we are now going to attack with the rook forcing the king to capture. Then we pick up the bishop and we fork. So we pick up the queen in the end and black is up a knight. All right, here's position number 16. This one is white to move. Okay, this is an, another royal fork, in fact. There are a lot in this chapter. So we begin with this forcing check here king must go to g7. Then do you see it? Yes, we're going to take the rook, and if black doesn't want to be down a piece, he has to try capturing, but then he walks into a royal fork, and he's down a piece anyway. So on to position 17. Okay, this one's white to move. Okay, this is a bit tricky. There's a common situation here. The king and rook are in prime forking position for, for a knight on c7. We begin with another fork, though. We play queen to d4, forking these two pieces. So if black retreats his queen somewhere to save it, we're going to pick up the knight for free. There's nowhere the black queen can go to safely to protect the knight. So the only chance black has is to trade queens. But after we trade queens, our pawn is now attacking the knight, and that gives black no time to defend against the fork on c7. If he moves the knight away somewhere, 
we continue with our fork. And we're going to pick up the rook on a8. All right, so white is ahead a rook in that line. Here's position 18. This one's white to move. All right, this one is a bit tricky. Um, we're going to begin with this check here on f6. Now, there's a couple moves. If you move to h8, you're going to get immediately mated. So black needs to continue to protect his rook. But then we're going to sacrifice the queen here, draw the king over to a square where he's going to get a royal fork again. So once again royal fork, we're going to pick up that queen and win. If we go back to this position, if black decides not to take our queen and instead tries taking the knight and maybe trying to play this in exchange down, then we have this nice continuation, queen to d8 check, and black must stay in contact with the queen here so as not to lose it. The only possibility is moving to f5. But then we have g4 check. And again, the only possible way to keep in contact with his queen is moving to f4. But that actually allows a checkmate. Queen to d4 check forces king to f3. Queen to d3 check. And there are two legal moves here if he plays to f4 then this is a checkmate. And if he blocks with the queen, then this is a checkmate. All right, so white wins in all lines. So here's position number 19. This one is white to move. Okay, so there's some nice geometry in this position. If you take a look at this square, this square, and this square, be nice to put a bishop here on d4 and fork the king and the rook. You might try to accomplish that by taking the knight off the board first and then doing that, but that doesn't work because black has a nice intermediate move. If we take the knight, he's simply going to take our rook and remove his piece from possible forks, and black is winning. So the correct way to play this is actually to trade off our loose rook first. Since a rook is sitting there loose, we're going to trade it off. Black should recapture if he doesn't want to be down material. Then we're going to pick up the knight, and we're a piece up, and if black decides to take us, then we get the desired fork, and we remain a piece up. So white wins. So on to position number 20. This one's white to move. Okay, forcing move to considers g6 check. There's two legal moves. If the king walks back to h8, then we get this nice fork here picking up a rook, and white will be up a piece in that line. So what happens if the king drops back to g8? Well, then we have this nice check with the bishop, and that's going to force him back over to h8 anyway. All right, so nice simple fork. So on to uh, position 21. This is white to move, and I'll give you a, a hint. It's very beautiful. Okay, to get started, we're going to play rook to c8 check, which is a fork. We're forking the king and the rook. The rook is under attack twice. So we'll look at both possible responses here. If black gets out of check by taking the pawn, then we'll just take the rook. Okay, and so we're up in exchange, and we have a couple of pawns as well. Our king is safe enough, and we're going to win that position. So the other move after the key move rook to c8 check is a little tougher to defeat. It's rook takes rook. That's the obvious reply. So what do we do in this position? Okay, we don't want to take the rook back and then give up our newly formed queen. We'll be down material. So the surprising move is the queen sacrifice here on a7. Now, we'll look at two moves here. The obvious one is what happens with the capture. Well, we're going to take the rook, but we're not going to get a queen because we'll be down a bishop. Instead, we're going to underpromote to a knight, getting another fork. So more than one fork in some of these positions. 
And now we have two pawns and an easy win. Got a protected passed pawn and another passed pawn. Just going back to one more um, consideration here. After we sack our queen on a7, what if black doesn't take and he just moves his king out of the way? Well, then we can either promote on b8 or we can take the rook with check. And then we've skewered the queen, which we take behind it, and we win in that line as well. All right, position number 22. This one is white to move. All right, we're going to take inspiration from the last puzzle. This one also involves under promoting to a knight. Okay, if we can get a knight here, we can fork the king and the queen. Unfortunately, this knight is protecting that square. So we begin with this check. There's only one legal response. Then we take that knight, which was defending that square. Unluckily, after black recaptures, and if he doesn't recapture, actually he's forced to, there's no other legal move. After he recaptures, we still underpromote to a knight, even though the king has moved. It's still in a forking position. So we pick up the queen, we're up a knight, and we win the position. So here is position number 23 out of 25. This one's not difficult. It's really cute, though. I like it. So there's this obvious pawn fork here. So if black doesn't want to lose a piece and be down material, he has to try taking. And then there's another very much the same pawn fork with the king and knight. And again, he doesn't want to lose a piece for nothing, so he can try to take it. But we just decoyed the king all the way to this prime square to be forked. And then after he moves, we pick up the rook. Okay, position number 24. This one's black to move. Okay, this one is tricky. We begin with bishop takes the knight, and white has to recapture if he doesn't want to be down material. But after that, we have the very tricky move, knight to d5 with a discovered attack on the queen and simultaneously attacking the bishop. But wait a minute, you say, our queen is hanging. Can't he just take it? Well, if he does, he just walks into yet another royal fork, and we're going to pick up that queen and remain a knight up. And there's no better line for white anyway. And finally, the last position, position number 25, this one is also black to move. Okay, this one's pretty easy. We're going to deliver a series of checks down the e-file. Doesn't really matter which square the white king goes to. We're going to deliver another one. And again, it doesn't matter which of these squares he goes to. We're going to deliver one more and fork the king and the queen, pick up the queen, and win the game. All right, I hope you enjoyed those 25 forks in under 25 minutes. Thanks for watching.